Hello and welcome to another exercise in which we are going to work with the allowance for uncollectible accounts. We will look at two different methods, percentage of receivables method, which is the balance sheet method, and percentage of sales method, which is the income statement method. In this exercise, we are told that we have credit sales during the year $260,000. Accounts receivable before any adjustment at December 31st is $55,000 and allowance for uncollectible accounts, at December 31st, we have 1,100 a credit balance in our account. So let me go ahead and put the information in over here in the first method we will look at, percentage of receivables method. So my allowance for uncollectibles, I have a T account for it. I have $1,100 a credit balance. So let me put that over here and I'm gonna call it beginning balance because I've not made any adjustments as yet. My Credit sales is 260,000. I'm setting this up in my income statement. This is a partial income statement, which obviously means I don't have all the information over here, but let me go ahead and write sales as $260,000. Accounts receivable is a balance sheet account, it's an asset. So in the balance sheet, I'll write accounts receivable, 55,000. Again, this is a partial balance sheet. I'm putting only some information in over here. Now, the first one tells us in the first requirement to record the adjustment for the uncollectible account using the percentage of receivables method. We estimate 12% of our receivables will not be collected. So in this case, in this receivables method, I start with this balance sheet number, 55,000, the unadjusted accounts receivable number. I am saying 12% of this, I'm not confident of, therefore I don't want to include that in my calculations. Actually, it's just in the presentations, accounts receivable is 55,000. I'm not writing it off, it's still 55,000. So what I'm saying over here is, I would like to have the allowance for uncollectible account to be 12% of 55,000. So 12% of 55,000 is 6,600. And the balance that I'm confident of collecting is 48,800. Now remember in the balance sheet, I cannot come up with a number or an account without it coming from my ledger. So we're working backwards over here. I'm saying that I would like to have 12%, my receivables ending balance. I'm saying 12% is not collectible. So I would like to have this number 6,600, I'd like to have that number in my T account, in my ledger as the ending number for allowance for uh, uncollectible account. I already had 1100. So if I want the desired balance to be 6600, I need to basically plug this number. I'm gonna call it a plug number. I need to plug in, I need to plug in 5500 over here. The only way this can happen over here, anything happens in the T account is by way of journal entry. So now I'm working backwards and I'm saying, okay, on December 31st, what I need to do is I need to credit the allowance for uncollectible account 5,500, which obviously means I need a debit. And what I'm basically saying is I'm gonna debit bad debt expense 5,500. So once again, let's look at what we have done over here. Bad debt expense is 5,500, which means that goes into the T account. I'm not showing you that T account here, but eventually it's gonna filter and come in over here. Bad debt expense, it's gonna be 5,500, leaving me with a net income of 254,500. Remember, this is a partial income statement. There's lots of other information that goes in. We're just looking at these two accounts, sales and bad debt expense. So once again, let's look at this, how we have done this calculations. We've done all our, uh, how we work through this. So to start with, let me take a, okay. I said I want to have, I work backwards. I said, this is what I want over here. Bring me, give me this number over here so that I can put it in over here. So I already knew what I wanted over here. I said, please put that in over here. In order to do that, I have to plug this number in. And the only way that number is gonna come in is, again, let me uh, draw a line over here and show you where I'm coming up with this. 
let me bring it all the way across here. Okay, the only way I'll have that is if allowance one collectible accounts is credited. So allowance one collectible is credited 5,500. So this kind of flies in the face of everything we've learned so far. We always said we need to do our journal entries, post it into the T accounts, prepare our trial balance, then prepare the financial statements. In this method, I'm saying, I know what I want in my balance sheet. So let's go back and see what number I should have over here. If I want this number, what number should I have over here? And that's what I plug into my journal entry. That's the percentage of receivables method. Now, as opposed to that, we have another method called percentage of sales method. And we'll see how to deal with that over here. Again, my sales number is not changing. My sales have been $260,000. That number, it is what it is. My balance sheet accounts receivable, it's 55,000. That doesn't change. I had a beginning balance of $1,100 in my allowance fund collectible accounts. That stays where it is. Okay, so regardless of which method I'm using, those balances all stay the same. Now, instead of doing this journal entry and doing everything we've done over here, the second requirement tells us not doing what we did in the first one, record the adjustment for uncollectible accounts using the percentage of sales method. We estimate that 3% of credit sales will not be collected. So here, what I'm saying is December 31st, I need to do a journal entry, bad debt expense debit, allowance for uncollectible accounts credit, and this needs to be 3% of credit sales. So my calculation over here is 260,000, that's the sales number multiplied by 3%, that's a number I think is not gonna go, uh, I'm not gonna get it. I post this number over here into the T account, the allowance fund collectible account, so this is posted from the journal, as we always knew. I end up with 8,900. This is my ending balance. Okay. That's the number I'll bring into my balance sheet, the 8,900. And I'm left with net receivables of 46,100. So... Again, let's see how we have worked our way through over here with uh, these numbers. I started out by saying, this is how much I have in bad debt expense. And my apologies, I should show the number over here. Allowance for doubtful account gets posted over here. This ending balance, whatever that number is, in this case, it's 8,900, that number is going to come in over here. And that's what we have in our balance sheet. So once again, if you're looking at the percentage of receivables method, you work from the balance sheet to the T account, to the journal. If you're working with the sales percentage of sales method, it's from the journal to the T account, to the financial statements. So there are two different methods. Percentage of receivables method is the one that everyone uses. Theoretically, it makes more sense. It's a little crazy and cumbersome trying to do this thing backwards, but it's really not a big deal. The percentage of sales method conceptually is very easy to understand because this is what we're used to. Once again, there are two different methods. Always note which method you've been asked to use and put in all the information that you need to in this T account first before you do anything else.